So <clears throat> now let's, uh, in order to get to the next step, which is analyzing, uh, doing some error analysis and specifically looking at the initial guess, whether, uh, you know, guaranteed in it that the any initial guess will actually work for the Jacobi or the gauss seidel We need to look at this in a more matrix format uh, so we can do some analysis on generalized uh, iterative methods. In order to do that, we have to first write Jacobi as a, um, as a, in matrix format, essentially. So, if you think about it, uh, what that means is the left-hand side, we can easily just say x, k plus 1, the vector, okay, and that would mean, uh, that would entail all the x1, x2, x3, and so on. Now, if you take this piece here, uh, this one here, let's identify this one first. So, that is basically what those values look like are, uh, they're something like this. So, they're b1 over a11, okay, b2 over a2, two, two, and so on and so forth. So this is easily done by the following. We introduce the matrix D, okay? We introduce the matrix D, which is uh, in fact, uh, where D is in fact equal to, is the diagonal matrix, which means uh, D would be, for instance, in this case, D is just A1100, um, uh, 0A22, two, two, uh, you know, zero all the way through, zero all the way through, all the way down to ANN. -N. And you've got zeros all the way down here, zeros all the way down here. So anyway, it's this diagonal matrix. So a D is this diagonal matrix. Now, you all know, you should know that D inverse then is simply uh, one over A11, one over A. So D inverse is in fact just one over A11, zero all the way through, one over A22, all the way down to one over ANN. -N and there are zeros everywhere everywhere else, okay? So just a quick, so so D inverse times the vector B should take care of the, uh, should take care of this first bit. Then we'll say the following. Now this is, this requires a bit more um, uh, understanding. The next part is this, I'm gonna write it down for you. I minus D inverse into the iteration, uh, the coefficient matrix A times the vector uh, K, in fact. Now, in order to motivate an understanding, I'm going to look at uh, the 3x3 three three case uh, just to explain how this works. So hopefully you understand the first two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this bit here, how this works, essentially, along with, of course, multiplication with this. So in order for you to understand this, let me, uh, let's just ignore the XK and look at I minus D inverse say for 3x3. Three three. So for, for, for instance, when n is equal to 3, uh, when n is equal to 3, our situation is something like this. We have, so we have something like this. So we have the, the identity matrix, uh, 3 by 3. This is just for demonstration demonstration purposes. Uh, and we have 1 over a1100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 over a22, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1 over a33. 3, 3, and that is multiplied by a11. So we have this situation now. Interesting. Now, when we multiply these two together, so we get this. Now it, you can see here. This is what's interesting. You see these ones and these ones. When we subtract these two matrices, we're going to end up with, in fact, this is going to become. Uh, all of these will disappear, and all that will be left is uh, the following. So we end up with this matrix, and now hopefully you can see that that in fact is is actually giving us this over here. So I hope that uh, helps you to understand uh, how this is in fact the Jacobi. So now uh, I'm going to clean this up, and we'll look at next the Gauss Seidel. Okay, so now Gauss Seidel, bit more complicated. What I'm going to do for the Gauss Seidel first is I'm going to take this AII. Uh, across uh, over here, I'm sorry, wait, 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 sorry. So I'm going to take this ii across to here so I get aii xik plus 1. So basically what will happen is um, I'll, I'll end up with, uh, I'll end up with, so I'll end up with this. If I, oh, now look at this, look at this term here and look at this term here, of course. These can be added into each other. So if I bring this to the left-hand side, I'm going to end up with, uh, I'm going to end up with just here a summation from j equals 1 all the way up to i, in fact. Okay, all the way up to i 
of aij okay because this is i minus one on this side and then i have the i over here so when i add these two i'm going to get everything up to i in fact and that's going to leave me with the other side uh, with what you see here which is the i plus one all the way to n and the aij x j k all right that's the k at edward so that's just that's just i'm rewriting it now if you look at this carefully what you will notice, in fact, here, what's interesting is that um, this, this over here is, in fact, what's, gonna, what's happening is as we count from 1 to i, we're essentially counting the lower triangular part of the matrix, is, in fact. These are all the lower triangle entries. So what we can easily do here is if we define L uh, on the side, I'm going to do that here, so if I'm if I say L is equal to the matrix which is A11 uh, all zeros up here A21 A22 zeros all the way down to A N1 A N2 A N N. So if I define this uh, matrix L, okay. Uh, which is not the same as the lower triangular matrix in LU decomposition. Do not get confused with that. This is a lower triangular matrix which has these just the lower triangle basically of A. In that particular case, in this, the way I've defined it now, A is in fact equal to L plus U. Okay, so the lower triangle part and the upper triangle uh, of this matrix. Okay, that's essentially the way we could define it. With this L, just take it away from uh, um, uh, A, the L, what you have here, in fact, these coefficients are showing us what when we take away the lower triangular part, the upper triangle remains. So that means we can write in matrix form as this. I hope you get that. Now, uh, if we just play with that a little bit more, which is then after that, it's quite straightforward. If we just rewrite that as uh, L inverse B, okay, and minus L inverse U, x k so that is in vector form uh, now we can simplify that a bit further and it will do the following uh, just a little bit of uh, matrix algebra i'm um, sorry uh, will help us with this if you notice here the u u is just a minus l so if this means this is just equal to this is just equal to in fact l inverse b minus l inverse into u and u is in fact a minus l so if i put that in here there's my xk then this can be it's just going to be equal to um l inverse b okay plus uh i because that goes in and essentially becomes l inverse l is just i so that will become plus i take it out and rearrange it so it becomes l inverse a x k and that basically is the gaussidal written in matrix form so here you see uh, quickly summarize the jacobi method and the gaussidal method in uh, matrix form now what we want to do is basically look at uh, essentially how these methods uh, can be generalized into any general iterative method and basically that any general iterative method can be considered in matrix form as having some matrix G that multiplies the XK term and some matrix H that multiplies the right hand side B term, in other words. So um, now, um, in usually this uh, where the iteration, iterative ma iteration matrix G, so where G is in fact uh, I minus h a okay so um, and h is some approximate inverse of a so that this can be rewritten as uh, uh, basically by taking the uh, two uh, the h uh, together we can combine this and say that uh, uh, the i times x k so these two multiply to give us just x k Okay, and plus the HB minus HAXK, we can combine into simply saying the following, H times uh, 
b minus a x k. Correct? By just rearranging the equation. Now that would mean uh, that would finally say that we can finally say then that hey this this thing here you see here, okay, this is something we've seen before, which is the residual. So essentially it boils down to just h times the residual at the kth iterate. So um, that's just a figurative way of looking at basically what goes on um, in an iterative uh, method. So um, the next important thing we need to do is to connect the, the iterative methods we've looked at with these. So for the Jacobi, so for the Jacobi, if you compare, we clearly see that h is equal to d inverse, uh, okay, and and for the Gaussidal, okay, for the Gaussidal, h is equal to, in fact, l inverse. And now, if you look at these, um, you can clearly see that this matches very closely, not closely, exactly with these uh, general iterative methods. Uh, so that basically is, in a nutshell, um, how one can structure general iterative methods. So we'll stop here. Thank you.